What up, my dudes? Today, I'm going to be ranking Chelsea Wolfe's discography. I love Chelsea Wolfe, I love her music. I have a handful of her records on vinyl, all of them on CD. Uh, yeah, I really love her, her albums. I've been a fan of her since uh, 2017, so about four years. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's just continue on. So at number seven, Number seven, uh, I'm gonna put her latest record, Birth of Violence. Um, I remember this coming out and I listened to a couple of the same, I mean, the music videos are so cool. Like one of them's in a cave and shit. Um, and it's cool, but uh, overall, I feel like the overall quality of the album, the songwriting just doesn't really grab me as much. Uh, I know Wolf had said that she'd been kind of like sitting on these ideas for a while and it was like an inevitable album that was going to come out uh, of acoustic songs and it essentially follows up Unknown Rooms uh, in that sense. And uh, yeah, I really am just not, I'm not entranced by it. It's not grabbing me. Uh, I don't ever come back to this. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a sleepy... Uh, whatever record. I feel like it, she needed to put it out and it just so happens to be a little weak sauce in my opinion. Uh, we're gonna move on to number six. Yes, uh, I'm gonna put Unknown Rooms, the other acoustic record. Um, yeah, I just, same thing. I don't really find myself coming back to it. I don't feel like it's Chelsea at full form. Um, I do like songs like I Died With You, which is not even that long. Flatlands is a hugely popular song of hers and, and Boyfriend is truly an amazing song, but uh, once again, I really don't find myself coming back to the acoustic stuff nearly as much. Um, uh, overall, I think all of Chelsea Wolfe's albums are amazing, so it's not like it's bad. I just don't come back to it very much. Um, we're going to move on to number... what is that? Five? Yes, five. Grime and Glow, or the debut. Uh, for a while, this was actually my favorite one, but as I come back to it, uh, I, I'm really not a fan of the production in particular. It sounds like it's horrible on purpose and uh, like with a black metal thing, I kind of got used to it, but with with the grime and glow with this record, I never really did. I always felt like it was a creative approach that didn't really work for me. I could never fully understand uh, the music and maybe that was on purpose for her because I know she was you know, super, super shy, had a lot of stage fright, so. Uh, you know, that it makes sense, I guess. Um, Cousins of the Antichrist, Deep Talks, The Why stand out. They're super strong, some of my favorites. Uh, it's kind of like a gothic singer songwritery kind of vibe. Um, and it's got, you know, it's, it's got some atmosphere. It's fun to listen to. It's grimy. It's kind of sweet, honestly. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a debut. Uh, and, it, and you can tell um, that that's what it is. It's a debut. Uh, it's a foot in in the door where she wants to go and it just doesn't really click with me. Uh, moving on, we're gonna go to number four. So this one was kind of hard. Uh, I kind of had a toss up between these two, but I had to go with Pain is Beauty. Yes, I know. And I really do love this record. I think the problem is the first half. I adore the first half and the second half really just doesn't do it for me. It really doesn't. Um, uh, but you know, I there's a lot of good cuts on here. We hit a wall, the warden, ancestors, the ancients. I love, and then house of metal. What an incredible song! And then uh, the ever popular feral love. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. It's the it's more of a, an electronic record, and uh, yeah, it feels kind of warm. It feels like I'm I'm in a like a hot tub or something when I listen to it. It's. Uh, it's definitely a, an interesting record and it's really a powerful record and I, I enjoy it. But uh, yeah, that second half kind of kills me, kind of kills me. Number three, this one's probably a bit higher on my list than most people would put it and it's his fun. And the reason this one's so high is because it's the first record I picked up, 16 Psyche, I just stumbled upon one day and it blew my mind. Uh, that song holds a special place in my heart and this record in particular is just, it really means a lot to me just because it's the first one I heard and I, the chaotic, distorted energy behind it, the sound, everything about it feels like I'm in her head. I don't know, I can't, it's like you're half awake and half asleep in this horrible loop of just distortion and agony, but it seems like there's a, a safe space 
base. There's a tiny little spot where it's, you can comprehend the madness. And that's what this record is to me. It's that small little spot in between, uh, in between chaos and, and being awake. Uh, and it's truly, it's truly exciting. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of torment. There's a lot of numbness. There's a lot of just snarl to this record. And I really love it. It, it seems like um, Chelsea Wolfe was having a lot. I mean, she kind of said the sleep paralysis was a big problem with her for, for ages, but it seems like she's tolerating the loss of control and it's calculated chaos in a way it's it's cathartic uh, exorcisms of music and i really appreciate that about this this seems like chelsea unhinged yet straightforward yet fearless and i really like that vex uh scrape um, particle flux uh, i mean every track on here is is phenomenal uh, so I don't mean to to brag about that record so much, but it, yeah. Uh, we're going to move on to number two, Apocalypsis. Uh, yeah, Chelsea's second album, I think she took the kind of approach she was going with, uh, Grime and Glow, took it into a darker, uh, more personal direction. And man, this album, I, I don't think I've ever listened to it during the day. Every time I try to, I'm like, eh, this doesn't feel right. I have to listen to it at night. It really has such a strong atmosphere to it. Um... It's like seeing, I feel like when I'm listening to this, I'm seeing a protagonist uh, look at the world, see how bleak it is, and kind of creating uh, your own world within it, like it's a movie. And uh, it's accepting the truth, seeing the ugly as beauty. Uh, it, it seems really, at least to me, that's how it feels. It's, it's uh, dark, it's pessimistic, yet realistic in a way gothic atmosphere, almost vampiric in a way, um, and it's daunting and sometimes scary, especially with the last track, but it's really attractive either way. I feel like it's a wolf creating a really um, cohesive atmosphere with the story, and it's really cool. Jesus Christ, this is going on way longer than I hoped. Okay, so number one, Abyss, everybody's favorite. Everybody fucking loves Abyss. There's a reason why every single time I listen to this record, there's always one song that sticks out to me that's different every single time, truly. Uh, man, the, I mean, how it's a simple, it's simple to it, uh, as with most of Wolf's songwriting, has a lot to do with relationships, has a lot to do with um, mental turmoil, has a lot to do with sleep paralysis, just all these different things. Uh, it's truly an enthralling and, and very musically uh, complex record. There's lots of layers to the sound and uh yeah it's it's cool bombastic in some cases like with carrying flowers and uh you know really slow and horrifying with ma and survive and the title track is so creepy and oh man it's really surreal it's excellently executed uh this is wolf's dark masterpiece if i do say so myself uh it truly is an incredible record and I think that's her best work. So anyway, don't mean to run as long as I did. Um, I love Chelsea Wolfe. I love her records. Um, and I love, she puts on quite the show. Uh, she really does. It's not like theatrical or anything, but you're just like brought into to her world and it's really cool. Um, so yeah, if you get the chance, please listen to every single one of her records. Uh, and tell me what you think of her discography. What's your favorite? What's your favorite record? What's your favorite song? Uh, yeah, I would love to know that. Thank you so much for watching. Stay heavy, stay safe, and as always, I will see you next time. So please have a great day. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.